ट्वेंटी वन लेसन फॉर दी ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट सेंचुरी बाय यूअल नोआ हेरारी चैप्टर फोर्टीन सेक्युलरिज्म इकनोलेज योर शैडो वट इज इट मीन टू बी सेक्युलर सेक्युलरिज्म एंड समटाइम डिफाइंड एज द निगेशन ऑफ रिलीजन एंड सेक्युलर पीपल आर दफर कैरेक्टराइज वट दे डोंट बिलीव एंड डू अकॉर्डिंग टू दिस डेफिनेशन सेक्युलर पीपल डो नॉट बिलीव इन एनी गोन or angels do not go to churches in temples and do not perform rites and rituals as such the secular world appears to be hollow nihilistic and immoral an empty box waiting to be filled with something few people would adopt such a negative identity self professing secularist view secularism in a very different way for them Secularism is a very positive and active world view which is defined by a coherent code of values rather than by opposition to this or that religion indeed many of secular values are shared by various religious traditions unlike some sects that insist they have a monopoly over all wisdom and goodness One of the chief characteristic of secular people is that they claim no such monopoly. They don't think that morality and wisdom came down from heaven in one particular place and time. Rather, morality and wisdom are the natural legacy of all humans. So, it is only to be expected that at least some values would pop up in a human society all over the world. and would be common to muslims christians hindus and atheists religious leaders often present their followers with a stark either choice either you are a muslim or you are not and if you are muslim you should reject all other doctrines in contrast secular people are comfortable with multiple hybrid identities as far as secularism is concerned you can go on calling yourself a muslim and continue to pray to allah eat halal food and make the hajj to makkah yet also be a good member of secular society provided you adhere to the secular ethical code this ethical code which is indeed accepted by millions of muslims christians and hindus as well as by atheists ensures the values of truth compassion equality freedom courage and responsibility it forms the foundation of modern scientific and democratic institution like all ethical codes the secular code is an ideal to aspire to rather than a social reality just as christian societies and christian institutions often deviate from the christian ideal so too secular societies and institution often fall far short of the secular ideal Medieval France was a self-proclaimed Christian kingdom but it dabbled in all kinds of not very Christian activities. Modern France is a self-proclaimed secular state but from the days of Robespierre onwards it took some troubling liberties with very definition of liberty. That does not mean that secular people in France and elsewhere lack a moral compass or an ethical commitment. it just means that it is not easy to live up to an ideal the secular ideal what then is the secular ideal the most important secular commitment is to the truth which is based on observation and evidence rather than on mere faith secular strive not to confuse truth with belief If you have a very strong belief in some story that may tell us a lot of interesting thing about your psychology about your childhood and about your brain structure but it does not prove that the story is true in addition seculars do not sanctify any group any person or any book as if it is and it alone has sole custody of the truth instead Secular people sanctify the truth wherever it may reveal itself, in ancient fossilized bones, in images of far-off galaxies, in tables of statistical data, or in the writing of various human traditions. This commitment to truth 
underlies modern science which has enabled human kind to split the atom decipher the geomen trick the evolution of life and understand the history of humanity itself the other chief commitment of secular people is to compassion secular ethics relies not only on obeying the edicts of this or that god but rather on a deep appreciation of suffering for example secular people abstain from murder not because some ancient book forbids it but because killing inflicts immense suffering on sentient beings there is something deeply troubling and dangerous about people who avoid killing just because god says so such people are motivated by obedience rather than compassion and what will they do if they come to believe that their god commands them to kill heretics witches adulterers or foreigners of course in the absence of absolute divine commandments secular ethics often faces difficult dilemmas what happens when the same action hurts one person but helps another is it ethical to levy high taxes on the rich in order to help the poor to wage a bloody war in order to remove a brutal dictator to allow an unlimited number of refugees in our country when secular people encounter such dilemmas they do not ask what does god command rather they weigh carefully the feelings of all concerned parties examine a wide range of observation and possibilities and search for a middle path that will cause as little harm as possible consider for example attitudes to sexuality how do secular people decide whether to endorse or oppose rape homosexuality bestiality and incest by examining feelings rape is obviously unethical not because it breaks some divine commandment but because it hurts people in contrast a loving relationship between two men harms no one so there is no reason to forbid it what then about bestiality i have participated in numerous private and public debates about gay marriage and all too often some wise guys ask if marriage between two men is okay why not allow marriage between a man and a god for a secular perspective the answer is obvious healthy relationship require emotional intellectual and even spiritual depth a marriage lacking such depth will make you frustrated lonely psychologically stunted whereas two men can certainly satisfy the emotional intellectual and spiritual needs of one another a relationship with a god cannot hence if you see marriage as an institution aimed at promoting human well-being as secular people do you would not dream of even raising such a bizarre question only people who see marriage as some kind of miraculous ritual might do so so how about relation between a father and his daughter both are humans so what's wrong with that well numerous psychological studies have demonstrated that such relation inflict immense and usually irreparable harm on the child In addition they reflect and intensify destructive tendencies in the parent evolution has shaped the sapient psyche in such a way that romantic bonds just don't mix well with parental bonds the full don't need god a bible to oppose insect you just need to read the relevant psychological studies this is the deep reason why secular people cherish scientific truth not in order to satisfy their curiosity but in order to know how best to reduce the suffering in the world without the guidance of scientific studies our compassion is often blind the twin commitments to truth and compassion result also in a commitment to equality though opinions differ regarding questions of economic and political equality secular people are fundamentally suspicious of all a prior hierarchies suffering is suffering no matter who experiences it and knowledge is knowledge no matter who discovers it privileging the experience or the discoveries of a particular nation class or gender 
is likely to make us both callous and ignorant. Secular people are certainly proud of the uniqueness of their particular nation, country and culture. But they don't confuse uniqueness with superiority. Hence, though secular people acknowledge their special duties towards the nation and their country, they don't think these duties are exclusive and they simultaneously acknowledge their duties towards humanity as a whole. We cannot search for the truth and for the way out of suffering without the freedom to think, investigate and experiment. Secular people cherish freedom and refrain from investing supreme authority in any text, institution or leader as the ultimate judge of what's true and what's right. Humans should always retain the freedom to doubt, to check again, to hear a second opinion, to try a different path. Secular people admire Galileo Galilei, who dared to question whether the earth really sits motionless at the center of the universe. They admire two masses of common people who stormed the bus type in 1789 and brought down the despotic regime of Louis XVI. And they admire Rosa Parks, who had the courage to sit down on a bus seat reserved for white passengers only. It takes a lot of courage to fight biases and oppressive regimes. But it takes even greater courage to admit ignorance and venture into the unknown. Secular education teaches us that if we don't know something, we shouldn't be afraid of acknowledging our ignorance and looking for new evidence. Even if we think we know something, we shouldn't be afraid of doubting our opinion and checking ourselves again. Many people are afraid of the unknown and want clear-cut answers for every question. Fear of the unknown can paralyze us more than any tyrant. People throughout history worried that unless we put all our faith in some set of absolute answer, human society will crumble. In fact, modern history has demonstrated that a society of courageous people willing to admit ignorance and raise difficult questions is usually not just more prosperous but also more peaceful than societies in which everyone must unquestionably accept a single answer. People afraid of losing their truth trend to be more violent than people who are used to looking at the world from several different viewpoints. Questions you cannot answer are usually far better for you than answers you cannot question. Finally, secular people cherish responsibility. They don't believe in any higher power that takes care of the world, punishes the wicked, rewards the just, and protects us from famine, plague, or war. We flesh and blood mortals must take full responsibility for whatever we do or don't do. If the world is full of misery, it is our duty to find solution. Secular people take pride in the immense achievement of modern society such as curing epidemics, feeding the hungry, and bringing peace to large parts of the world. We need not credit any divine protector with this achievement. They resulted from humans developing their own knowledge and compassion. Yet for exactly the same reason, we need to take full responsibility for the crimes and failing of modernity from genocide to ecological degradation, instead of praying for miracles, we need to ask what we can do to help. These are the chief values of the secular world. As noted earlier, none of these values is exclusively secular. Jews also value truth. Christians value compassion. Muslims value equality. Humans value responsibility and so forth. Secular societies and institutions are happy to acknowledge these links and to embrace religious Jews, Christianity, Christians, Muslims and Hindus, provided that when the secular code collides with the religious doctrine, the latter gives way. For example, to be accepted into secular society, Orthodox Jews are expected to treat non-Jews as their equals. Christians should avoid burning heretics at stake. Muslims must respect freedom of expression and Hindus ought to relinquish caste-based discrimination. 
in contrast there is no expectation that religious people should deny god or abandon traditional rites and rituals the secular would judge people on the basis of their behavior rather than of their favorite clothes and ceremonies a person can follow the most bizarre sectarian dress code and practice the strangest of religion ceremonies yet act out of deep commitment to the core secular values there are plenty of jewish scientists christian environmentalists muslim feminists and hindu human rights activists if they are loyal to scientific truth to compassion to equality and to freedom they are full members of the secular world and there is absolutely no reason to demand that they take off their yarmulkes crosses hijabs and tilaks for similar reason secular education does not mean a negative indoctrine that teaches kids not to believe in god or not to take part in any religious ceremonies Rather, secular education teaches children to distinguish truth from belief, to develop their compassion for all suffering beings, to appreciate the wisdom and experiences of all the earth denizens, to think freely without fearing the unknown, and to take responsibility for their actions. And for the